is you come unformed, you don't come fixed. If you do not do the right thing, it does not work. There are assumptions and assumptions and assumptions. Not settling down wherever it's a bit comfortable. So, uh, what does success look like? What does it take? Well, a human being came with too many potentials. Because of that, it needs a certain level of striving for a human being to forget about the world, to consider yourself successful. If your idea of success is you're doing little better than your neighbor, I call that sickness, that is not success. You are happy that your neighbor is worse than you. Is this sickness or success? It is sickness. But in some way you full feel fulfilled with what you're doing, let's consider that as success for now. It, does, it doesn't matter whether you're better than somebody or worse than somebody, that question should not even come up in your mind. Because human being has come with such open sense of possibilities, you come unformed, you don't come fixed. You have to fix yourself. Different people throw different types of balls at you. From all over, your parents, your teachers, the school, the neighbors and the society and the world, throws all kinds of things at you to gather all this muck and make something worthwhile out of yourself is your business, that's your success. It doesn't matter whether somebody thinks you're worthwhile or not, you feel you're a worthwhile life. Good enough for now. World may not recognize, it doesn't matter, but you know you're worthwhile. Just working hard doesn't do things in the world. <laughs> this is the biggest problem. Right from your childhood, your parents taught you, if you study, how much you… how should you study? Study hard. If you work, how should you work? Work hard. You do everything hard. <laughs> if you do things hard, <laughs> things won't happen. It will become a donkey's life. You believe, you believe you can do everything hard and it will work. It will not work just because you do it hard. You must do the right thing, only then it works, isn't it? If you do not do the right thing, it does not work. People who are successful are successful not because necessarily they work hard, they just know what's the right thing to do with their kind of job. That's why they're successful. Nobody told you, you must study in joy. Nobody told you, you must work in love. They told you, you must do it hard. They made their lives very difficult for themselves. Now they were ins they're ensuring that your life becomes difficult too. <laughs> why do you work hard? What, what are you working hard? If it's hard, give it up. If you can do it joyfully, you do it, otherwise don't do it, isn't it? Isn't it so? If you're going to make yourself miserable in the process of working, what use is your work to yourself or to anybody around you? You just sit at the temple gates and beg and eat, it's better. Somebody will throw you one rupee, two rupee, you eat out of it. At least that you do joyfully, sit there happily, eat what people throw at your bowl. If you're going to make it so hard for yourself, I'm sure you're making it very hard for everybody around you, isn't it? If you're going to spread misery in the world, it's better you don't do anything. If you're going to spread joy in the world, go and do as much as you can. Now you work hard. Just because you work hard, things need not happen and they do not happen. Another day, Shankaran Pillai, fell into the septic tank. I want you to imagine. 
right up till here in filth. Please imagine and see. He tried to get out desperately, he couldn't. Then after some time, he started screaming, fire, fire, fire. Neighbors heard the fire screams, called the fire brigade. The firemen came and looked everywhere, no fire. Then they found him in the septic tank, pulled him out. And then they asked, why were you screaming fire? Then Shankaran Pillai retorted, if I said shit, shit, would you come? <laughs> you must do the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work. Those who have been very successful, either in music, sport, art, business, spiritual process, doesn't matter what, those people <laughs> never know when they ate, when they slept, when they got afternoon rest. I have not seen such a thing in my life <laughs> So, uh, those who are committed to being successful with whatever they are doing, one important aspect of their life is they are not settling down wherever it's a bit comfortable. Because comfort will happen when they lower you to in the grave, very comfortable you are, you know. Have you seen how comfortable they are? Once they're dead, if you throw them, they're also they're comfortable, if you lower them, they're comfortable, even if you burn them. Right? Yes or no? Comfort will come. Right now, it's about ensuring that there is profoundness of experience and there is impactfulness of activity. Because if they had given you a limitless amount of time, you could do all those things, nothing wrong, I'm not against them. But they gave you such little time with such tremendous potential of being human, that's the problem. So when you say fate, obviously it's something that you cannot do anything about. When you say luck, again obviously it's something that you cannot do anything about. When you say God, again it's something that you cannot do anything about. So only thing that's in your hands is effort. So put your hundred percent into your effort, what happens, happens, <laughs> isn't it? So don't leave proportions of your energy and your capability to luck, God, fate, all these things. That's not your business, if there is such a thing, it will act. Your business is only effort, isn't it? Just do that. Effort has to be incisive in the sense, it should be focused, calibrated. Simply if you make effort, it's foolish effort, isn't it? Just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? So, for all these things to happen, you need perception and intelligence. So that's all you must do in your life. Constantly looking for ways to enhance your perception and your intelligence. The rest will anyway happen. This is one thing that unfortunately humanity is not doing. They are trying to become capable of something. Do not try to become capable of something. Just enhance your perception and intelligence. See, if you realize that you do not know, if it's just a full-scale realization that you do not know anything, paying attention, will be natural because you know everything. 
ah, you know this guy, you know this, 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 this. There are assumptions and assumptions and assumptions. Well, I have used it in a different way. But even if you're doing business, even if it's for business purposes, the only reason why one human being seems to be all the opportunity seems to be going in his direction and not other people is simply because he is able to see and other people are not able to see. It's not that it's not there for others. <laughs> One is able to see and others are not able to see. So essentially, a leader means that you are able to see something that others are not able to see. So, attention without intention, simply being attentive, that's what we were trying to do in the afternoon. Not paying attention to something, just practicing attention, a very heightened level of attention where an unfocused attention, but when you focus it on something, just about anything has to yield, there is no other way to that attention. So, I always focused on enhancing and sharpening my attention never under tension <laughs> because what you gather is not you. Essentially, you know that you exist only because you have some sense of attention right now, isn't it? Suppose you fall asleep and you lose your attention, you do not even know that you exist. So the basis of your existence itself is attention. And this attention need not be mortgaged to anything. You just have to sharpen the tension. See, if you have a knife in your hands, there is no such thing that you have to cut only apples with this. If you have a sharp enough knife, you could cut anything that you want. But the important thing is the knife is sharp enough. So that your attention is keen enough, not for something or the other. If your attention has become very keen, if you wish to do a certain type of activity, you can successfully do it. What role can spiritual process play? It is like this. If you want to do anything well, suppose you want to drive well, the more you know about your car, the better you know your car, the better you can drive it. Is that so? Yes? Is that so? Then, this goes for you, the better you know this one, the better you can deal with it the better you can conduct this to the process of life. Just knowing the surface of it, you are not going to do a great job. If you just want to go to your office, maybe you just have to know where the steering wheel is and where the two or three pedals are. But if you want to put this on the Formula One track, you better know everything, all the dynamics that are functioning in the driving of a car, isn't it? So if you want to be on the fast track, you need to know much more about it. If you somehow want to survive and go, you don't have to need know much about it. I believe when you call yourself an entrepreneur, you're planning to be on the fast track. If you want to be on the fast track, there should be nothing about this that you do not know. You must know how to conduct this. You must know how this will function at its optimum level. When I say optimum, see right now, if I close my eyes and stand here, if somebody walks into this hall, I will tell you what kind of person has walked into this hall. You could do well with this in your office, isn't it? Yes or no? <laughs> in your business, somebody walked into your place, if you just look at him, you know what has walked into your office, would it be a big thing? Oh, what should I do? What great yoga should I do? No, this is not the quality of a yogi. Even your dog knows this. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> your dog is sitting under the sofa, somebody came at the front door, he's no, he knows who has come. Yes or no? Why is it that you're missing out, I'm asking? You're missing out because you have messed up your mind in such a way. If you just learn to handle this properly, you will see human perception is such that you don't have to struggle with every little thing. The stress and nonsense that you're going through in life 
is simply because this has not been sufficiently explored. So spiritual process does not mean looking up or looking down, it means looking inward because the more you know about it, the more efficiently and more successfully you can conduct this. It doesn't matter what, gra what uh, qualifications you have, it doesn't matter what accumulated information you have in your head, essentially your success is determined by how this one is right now, yes or no? And how to keep this one in the highest possible level of alertness and balance, exuberance and equanimity. If you do not know this, you will be only successful by chance and even if you are successful, anyway you will suffer it, you will not enjoy it. It was not just the idea, there are technologies to become free. If you became free from the process of your body and the process of your mind, if you can sit outside of it and work it, you would work it brilliantly, do you understand? You would be able to use this body and use this mind only when you are able to not treat it as myself. These are powerful instruments in your life. These instruments can be employed the way you want it, only when you have an outside access to it. Right now, you are a phenomenal computer but you don't know where the keyboard is. When you can't think, you scratch this spot, that's not where it is. Do you see people, when they cannot think, they're thinking hard, they scratch here. It doesn't work like that. There are… there are proper steps that one can take, it could be offered here if everybody…